How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Spirited Away. This came out originally in 2001 in Japan. Uh, we in the States wouldn't get it till 2003 when Disney provided it with a dub and distributed it over here. Uh, this is written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki and stars Rumi Haragi, Mayu Arano, and Mari Natsuki. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. Now, overall, I do want to say I'm a bit of a fan of anime. I've seen a bit of it, especially back when I was in high school. I watched a whole lot. I'm not the biggest anime nerd, but I appreciate it. But I hadn't seen any Studio Ghibli stuff before. A lot of the way, kind of sadly, that it's marketed in the West is sort of Japan's Disney, which I don't particularly like. I'm not a huge Disney fan, but it gets kind of the impression of, oh, it's kids stuff. But it is a lot deeper than that, and I really wish I'd checked it out sooner. Uh, to be honest, what got me to check this out was quite simply No Face's Mask. I saw that mask around, and I was like, I gotta see the movie just to know what the character is that's tied to this really cool mask. White with a slight mournful expression and purple lines. It was just something I, I had to know. So I did finally track it down, and when I had looked up a little bit about the movie, I could see that there was more going on than just some kid's movie. You know, I could see the darkness and the magic and the, the spirits and stuff. I'm like, okay, this actually looks really interesting. And when I put it on, I was really, really glad. You know, it is, it is family friendly. A kid can watch it, but it's not dumbed down. And I really do appreciate that. There's really deep ideas, you know, there's psychology where I feel that a lot of this movie is talking about uh, kids learning to grow up in their perspectives of the adult world. That's interesting. And there's a ton of stuff with the fantasy and the world building and how this world works. There's tons of creatures and details and ideas in here. And I think the forgettable parts of this movie are way more creative than what we normally get. It's just they're sh so outshined by all this other just imagination here. I it's really good. And the animation is absolutely stunning. You, to be honest, forget how good animation can look until you see something like this and you're blown away. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I finally checked this movie out and I thought it was really good, and now I do want to see more Studio Ghibli stuff. I already managed to find Howl's Moving Castle, and of course, Totoro's the big one. The one I really want to check out, though, is Nausicaa, because of the connection to uh, Mobius and stuff. But I definitely want to check out more of these in the future. I guess without further ado, let's talk a bit about this movie's plot. I'm not going to be doing major spoilers, but I do want to take a minute, analyze the movie, talk about certain points, so go through the plot just a little bit, not the finale, just the setup, and then analyze a few moments a little deeper. Anyway, we open up with a girl in the car with her parents. It's moving day, they're going to a village they're not super familiar with, and they get lost in the woods. Two fun concepts there. So many times when you move to a new town, strange, weird stuff happens in movies, and of course getting lost in the woods is never good. They eventually follow this dirt road down to a weird old building with a tunnel in it, and they can't drive through because there's a statue blocking their way. So they go in on foot, and it appears to be some sort of theme park slash spa thing. You know, we don't really have these in the West, but some sort of relaxation land. And the parents find a spread of food that they start eating from. The daughter knows better. The daughter says we shouldn't even be here. This place is abandoned and creepy. Let's not eat that food. And the parents will turn into pigs. Very fairy tale concept there and a kind of a creepy moment. And she'll also meet this kid, the, the only person that, they, that she's seen, who says, 
what are you doing here? It's about to get dark. And when it gets dark, all the spirits come out. And there's so many cool, you know, just like the base spirit design is this like, you know, black ghost shape with two glowing eyes. Those look cool. But then there's so many different things, so many character designs. You know, there's animal based spirits like a frog or something. And there's, you know, ones that I'm not even sure what what that is. And I you, you want to pause the movie and look at each different one. And you can tell there was just so much work uh, on display here. Uh, but anyway, the kid says, I want to get you help. There's a witch here that runs the place called Yubaba, and she's going to curse you, you know. It's not going to end well for you, but the one thing we can do to keep you safe is get you employed, because if you have a job here, she can't touch you. So they go and they get her a job, and now she's working at this spa for spirits. You know, all her co-workers are some form of spirits, all the customers and the management are, and you do get kind of that hierarchy, the management and the customers, and then she's way down at the bottom trying to work and figure out this world. And I do really like, you know, you do get the sense of world building and how this place works. You know, you want to get some water, you have to talk to a guy and get a tag, and then you put the tag on the little rope and it sends it to the guy in the boiler room, and the guy in the boiler room's like a spider with eight arms and he's pulling all these levers and stuff. Not really a spider, he's just got all the arms, you know? But there's a clear system in place here and you're interested to know how it works and all the different little things. But there's also things that, that don't make sense. You know, like you don't know how magic works. And like the, the witch in her, her office up top will have these three green heads with beards that just kind of hop around and go yup 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 what are they about who knows this movie knows that not everything should be explained and some stuff should seem just far out and magical and unexplainable and they really do a good job you know so many times when you hear world building it's just a character preaching exposition at the audience and it gets so boring but here it's very natural and it does the thing that good world world building should do pique your curiosity get you invested want to see no want to see and know more about how the world works and, and pull you in and not explain everything especially when you're dealing with fantasy and magic but also there's a tie-in with this world building, with this strange and creative place that ties into what I feel is one of the meanings of the film. The girl is pulled into this new place, her parents are taken away from her, and she's getting a job, and I think that's really important. It's about trying to move on and understand the world without your parents. It's about growing up, and it's about how when you see adults and when you try to grow up yourself and when you try to fit in and how so many other people seem to know how the world works and you don't like obviously when I got my first jobs I never dealt with anything quite so fantastic but watching this movie I did have flashbacks to going into a new job and having no idea what's going on and sort of that kid versus adult perspective where the adult world just seems so strange and weird and how it doesn't make much sense but now you have a job and now you're on your own and now you have to figure out and understand the adult madness I think that's a lot of what this is talking about we also get uh, classism in here you know there's the managers up at the top the witch Yubaba and then you also get the customers, you know, that come in, they're the ones spending money and they're who she has to serve and, and she's there at the bottom, she's the workers. And you get lots of really dark stuff, you know, it doesn't ever go super dark, it doesn't ever go unkid friendly or anything, but you do get like when she signs the contract with the witch, the witch waves her hands and takes away most of the letters from her name. Uh, she goes from Chihiro to simply sin. 
And, yeah, changing her name, and through the magic, she starts to forget her real name. You know, she starts to go, oh yeah, I'm Sin, wait, that wasn't my name, who was I? Taking away your identity, that that's pretty dark. But also, you know, uh, she sleeps in this room with a bunch of other female workers just packed in there with like no sense of privacy or personal space and the idea that her parents are kind of strung in front of her like you want to save your parents right you don't want us to to to, to slaughter them because they're pigs now right and that's really a dark realistic thing that a lot of people that are trapped in unfair employment really are strung along from this unobtainable goal that's always just right in front of their face and yeah that is a super dark kind of depressing thing about the movie it, it is really cool but in addition to the ideas of growing up not understanding the world and the the harsh realities of it we also get talks about death and mythology in here and there's a lot of super interesting stuff you know the metaphor of there's a train, but it only goes in one direction. You wonder what that could mean. And there's a ton, a ton of YouTube videos analyzing different parts of this. And it's things that aren't necessarily said in the movie, but then you hear someone explain it and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. How did I not get that? Um, for example, the, the thing that got me into this movie, No Face. They never really explain who he is. He's a spirit that the main girl lets in, and when other people find out there's a no-face, they kind of freak out. Uh, but he's, like, trying to help her. He sees her more than the other spirits do, and he tries to give her things that he thinks she may need, and sometimes he's right, sometimes he's not. But what is this strange attachment that no-face has to our main character? And there is a theory, and it's pretty universally agreed upon, and when I heard that, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I really do like seeing all these people talk and explain uh, Spirited Away and, and get into the, the details. To be honest, it feels a little bit like the YouTube community behind The Shining. The Shining has a whole bunch of people analyzing and explaining it and I am glad to see that there's people doing the same with Spirited Away because I I do think that like The Shining it is one movie that has a lot more going on and you can really dig into and get invested you know you can enjoy the surface level but it does go uh, pretty pretty deep but beyond all that big stuff beyond the meaning and the animation and, and stuff you still have your core, your main character, and I really do like her. You know, she is sensible. She's the one saying, hey, let's not go into this haunted park, okay, guys? Hey, let's not eat that strange and mysterious food. Come on, parents. So she has that head on her shoulders, and she's kind of put into that Alice in Wonderland sucked into this mysterious world, trying to analyze and understand stuff, and... She quite literally, in the uh, in a lot of the movie, will physically fall down and try to, you know, stumble her way through the place, you know, climbing around on the outside at points. But yeah, that idea of watching her figure stuff out and watching her, you know, like she gets called a klutz sometimes, you know, watching her figure out and understand things. You know, they pair her up with this woman that had worked there for years and years and she kind of knows the ropes and there's an interesting scene where she's like, you're not giving me this girl I don't like or she'll slow me down. And then the second they get behind closed doors, oh, I'm so glad you made it. I was really worried about you. And you can see kind of the, the hands they have to play. And, you know, learning who she can trust, building up a name for herself. The stink spirit walks in and she's like the only one, you know, they, they send the new girl to, to go and and try to clean the stink spirit, you know, fighting and, and working her way and just seeing that character journey where she becomes a, a stronger person by the end of it, yeah, you really do get behind her and by the end of the movie, as I said earlier, when it all's over, you feel like you've been on a, a huge journey 
And yeah, no, this is a really great movie. I definitely recommend it. If you haven't seen it before, it's not just some whatever kids movie. There's a lot going on, beautiful animation, a deeper meaning, and several layers to analyze it. So definitely recommend it for everyone. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Asian media playlist, where you can see me talk about some other anime. A lot of J-Hor and uh, Junji Ito comics in there as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Asian playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.